Hi everybody, welcome to the Tuesday Tips. Now for September, I've started off really talking about designing and we were looking at the shoe for designing and all that. And I also received a question from someone that asked me, and this is actually a top that I do in one of my, um, in my module one, one of my pattern drafting classes. And she asked me to please show how I designed this top. Now this top, if you look at the image that I'm showing you, it was purely just something I found on Pinterest and I was talking about it in the course um, going through pattern manipulation and how you can actually design it. So, uh, so I got the question, can I show how to design it? And then what we'll do next week, Tuesday, I'll also just show you how I sewed it. So I'm now going to take you through the steps of what I did with the uh, dot manipulation. And if you look at it, it's actually just a vest top, but comparing it to the vest top I've got on today, it's, it's almost just... I don't know, I can say almost a little bit smarter. Um, it's something that you can go really also wear under jackets or anything like that. But again, I love the shaping because we're working with style lines or, or dot manipulation and style lines, which is giving us that shape. So for me, this is really such a nice top to work with or a pattern to work with. Now, first off, you know, I work with Schufer Designs. So I used my Schufer Designs dress kit uh, blueprint, which has already been uh, drafted for my body. So the bust dot that's on there is for my cup size. Um, everything on there is really made for me. I even did a forward shoulder, everything. So every time I design, I just have to pull out that sloper and I can start designing anything that I want. Now, if you don't have sure for designs and you just want to do the exercise, maybe look at a, a basic pattern that you do have. Uh, the only thing is with this one, really, I wanted the bust dot in here because the bust dot is what's giving me the shape when I start manipulating it. So a normal t-shirt doesn't have it. So maybe just look also for a top that you already have that is a fitted top with the bust dot. But for all my sure fit ladies out there, you're going to pull out your blueprint from your sure fit designs. I'm just going to talk you through how we design it. I'm going to do the steps on my tracing vellum as well, just to show you the dot manipulation. But I do want you to try this pattern. Obviously, if you want to size down, I'm not talking about sizing down now because this is really, um, you've got to size down to the percentage of stretch that you have in your fabric. So that you will have to do on your own. And again, you can even just size down by size, going on your master pattern again and sizing down with a couple of dots. That's also an easy way for you to do. We don't have to remove dots like we usually do with t-shirts because we are using the dots now for our design. Now, first off, when I decided, when I saw this picture and I thought, okay, um, what do I want to do with it? It's important to know with the square neckline, where do I want it to sit on my body? Because I've got my bra straps. I don't want bra straps showing. So I had to go and measure my body a little bit. And then also with this picture, I couldn't see what the back looks like, but then I thought, okay, but I still want to carry on the square design to the back. And I still wanted to create these style lines. And we'll zoom in just now so you can actually see the style lines. And um, so I thought I'm gonna do it on the back as well. And it's actually such a pretty top when I wear it. Now, first off, with our sure for designs, you know that your blueprint is a jewel neck. And that meaning that it's sitting basically on there. On this little, just here where that hollow starts, my, my neckline sits there, which makes it easy for me to design necklines because I can go with my tape measure and I can put it down and I can measure down to where I want this to be. Now, I, I went and decided, okay, I don't want too revealing. And I said, okay, I'm going to go whatever measurement you're going to get. I'm just going to do it here again for you. So I took it from that hollow and I measured down and it gave me 10 centimeters. So that was my first measurement. The next measurement I did exactly the same on the back. You know this little protruding bone that we have there? I actually had my husband put the tape measure there and measure down for me so that I can see where did I want that back to be, that square where I wanted it to end as well. And then the next thing that I wanted to consider was how wide did I want that area? And again, remember, I have to wear a bra all the time uh, being a fuller bust. So I, I don't want any bra straps or my bra showing through there. For me, it's something I didn't want. So again, I took my tape measure and I measured, I can feel this bra sitting, you know, part of the bra cup already starts there. And I went and I said, okay, I just want to go in a little bit. And I measured that and I halved it. And then when I halved it, 
it literally gave me that size from my center front where I wanted to go. That is all I did to design my top. Um, okay, another thing that I had to think of is how wide did I want this? I could have gone wider or narrower and I also decided I love taking my tape and putting it on my body and standing in front of the mirror and say okay that is the length that I or the width that I want over there. So this is purely going on what you want and what you like. Um, so that is my starting point that I went to uh, when I started to design it. Now also I'm just going to turn this. She doesn't want to swivel so I've got to turn with her. Let's just turn her. If we look at the back as well, can you see I did the square there as well? And again, I wanted to make sure my bra strap's gonna be covered. I had my husband go and also from that little bone, he measured down and I said, okay, that is the measurement. This one is like 11 centimeters. So that was really what I designed. I must say when I started designing it as well, it was more of a square line, but I decided I actually wanted to shape a little bit. I didn't just want a like a really square line. So if we actually look at the back as well, look at my lines that I have here. This is my princess line that I took up and I took it into the neck area over there. You'll see there's an extra line over there as well. And this panel, purely what I did, it's got nothing to do with my dart and dart manipulation. This is a style line. I just went and drew in the style line on this pattern piece over there. And if we look at the front now as well, this is where my dart manipulation happened. I took my bust dart, which is running from the side, and I moved it into the neckline as well. And this is my waist dart. So this is my dart manipulation and my waist dart that I used for shaping. Again, this line that you're seeing there, it's got nothing to do with our darts. This is purely a style line that I went and I drew it onto my pattern piece. I wanted to divide this. Also, when I considered it, um, you might not be able to see it. I'm just going to turn. You'll see that at the bottom, especially at the hem here, this section is slightly wider than that section. And the reason why I'm doing this, remember this is on the side of my body and I want it at least for this line to come slightly around my body as well, the style line that I drafted. And that's why I didn't go and divide this in half. I could have gone and divided it in half, but I didn't. I wanted this just to curve around my body before that style line started. So that is how I designed this side. Also remember when we do work with patterns and there's going to be no sleeves, we're designing sleeveless, I do want to lift slightly under the arm so that I, first off it's not going to show the bra and secondly it's also preventing a little bit of gaping. So many of our tops we can see a little bit of a gaping on this area where it just stands away from the body. And if you are using your shear for designs patterns you will know that at the underarm point you've actually got two dots for yourself there one is for sleeves one is for a sleeveless and so we are going to change it and just lift it up that little bit and by lifting up that little bit also shortening this armor line over there that's also going to prevent that gaping that we have also if we're looking at the fabric now if you're going to try this exercise and you want to sew it Use a more of a stable knit. You really, because we've still got all these lines and you know, the dart is still sitting there and these style lines as well. I just felt that a, a firmer knit or more stable knit worked better for me. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna try this design on a really super stretchy knit fabric. I really don't think, I think you lose the, the style. If I can put it that way, you're losing this whole shape. Um, I don't know, it's just not for me. In my mind, it's not gonna work. You can go ahead and play with it. And if it works for you, you can always let me know and say, you know what, I did it in this knit and it's working. I would love to know about it. But in my mind, I just imagined more of a firmer knit. So there is really, if we look at this, there's hardly any movement vertically. I didn't want vertical stretch. Um, this one is got a little bit of my stretch horizontally so for me this is really a stable knit so I would say about a 10 to a 20 percent stretch would work maybe not even 20 percent you've got to play remember the more stretch you have the more you've got to size down now when I did this one because it is a stable knit eventually or the first one that I made I didn't go and size it down um, but what I did end up doing is I eventually just took it in just a little bit on this area just to keep that shape for me um, and that is basically the only sizing down that I did so I'm just talking you through my steps when I made it 
but otherwise this is really a very nice straightforward pattern um, also the initial photo that i showed you they almost put like i made these areas wider so it almost flares out a little bit on the hip again not a style that i want i don't want to draw attention to my hips i make it look any wider than what it is so i decided no i'm just st sticking to my straight lines that i prefer you guys really you can go play you're designing for your body you can see what you want to do now i'm just going to go now and i'm going to take my blueprint and i'm going to just show you the dart manipulation and how i designed the neckline so that you can also go and play with it and then what we will do is next week i will cut one out and then maybe just take you through the sewing because one thing that i did oh yes that i must mention to you one thing that i did initially when i designed this i did quite a bit of a facing you know about i would say about a five centimeter facing that i did and um, i didn't like it on the knit because i could really see that facing line just showing through my fabric that like forming like a little ridge almost i could see it and and i'm not someone even though i top stitch it feels like it wants to just move out a little bit so i thought no um so i went and i cut it on the inside i actually cut i top stitched it and I went and I trimmed it away. You won't see it now, but you'll see next week when we sew it. And I actually went and I trimmed it away. So it almost looks more like a, uh, I don't know, almost like a, just a special finish that I did, but it's not really as finished. We can't just go take a straight strip and work it on here. We do need to keep the shape. And that's why I eventually or initially started with a facing. But I'm not too fond always of the facings, as I said, but um, so I just went and trimmed it away and created something different. So I'll even show you that next week. But let's go to my table and I, quick, I will quickly show you how to design the top. Let's have a look at the pattern pieces now. So I've gone and I've copied my blueprint from my dress kit and I've got my front and my back. So I'm going to start designing on my front. Just to take you through all the steps that I went when I designed it. I did go ahead and make a couple of pencil marks for myself. Um, because when I'm working in these sharpies, unfortunately, or these liners, unfortunately, I can't go and erase it. Now, when I measured my body, like I told you, I went and I measured down from the center front. And I measured down how far that I wanted to go. And then also, I decided, remember, I went and I measured inwards. So that I'm not going to get my bra sticking out there. So I, you can really go very deep if you are going to design. But then I've got the problem with the bra, the bra um, straps and everything showing. So I'm just going to go and draw this line for now. Just so you can see the starting point. So my first one was really, and I'm going to do it with this one. I went and I made my marker. That's how low I want it to be. And because I measured in, I went and I said, that is the second marker so i went down i think about 10 centimeters this was about eight centimeters remember i took the whole measurement divided it in half because i measured from bra strap to bra strap really and gave myself a little bit of um, space still to cover it so that was that measurement in half then i decided I'm designing all of this before I even start looking at my dart manipulation because I need to know where's my neckline going to be because that princess line is going to go into the neckline and I had to decide how wide did I want this to be and I went and I measured my shoulder and I made a halfway mark for myself because I want to cover my bra again so that was my halfway mark and I said I wanted it let's say five centimeters or even six centimeters whatever the width you are you want you're going to do it and what i did when i measured mine and it, there's no formula and there's no reason really for this let's say i'm working on um i just want to see what i took in the end i took five centimeters because that's what i wanted and instead of going three centimeters and three i wanted to shift a little bit more to this side so i ended up and i said i'm going to measure two centimeters and guys there's no formula here this is my preference that I wanted for my body how I wanted the top to sit so I decided I'm going to go and mark those markers for me and then I know all right that is where I want my strap to sit that is how wide I want my strap to be the next thing that we're going to do is I want it to lift. Remember on your Schiffer Design Shield dress kit, you've got the two dots. When we are working with our sleeves, we use the lowest, the lower dot. If it's sleeveless, we go to the higher dot. And that is basically two and a half centimeters up or an inch. 
Now I can decide to maybe not go two and a half centimeters. Remember we're designing for our body, um, but I left it at that just to show you now. So that is my point that I've got there. So I've lifted the underarm so that I don't see the bra, but remember by lifting the underarm, I am shortening this arm hole. So that is also gonna start helping to not have gaping at all. Because as soon as we start cutting in and going that way and lengthening that arm hole basically, I can get a little bit of gaping. Now in my module one that I do work, which is just a pay basic pattern making um, class that I do or module that I do, I do go into um, contour dots. I'm not going to do it for this video because a lot of you out there don't work with the contour dots and I don't want any confusion. So I'm just going to design as it is. But usually on my body, I would take a little bit in at certain points so that I'm not going to get gaping because I do have a bigger um, bust as well but I am quite flat across this area so I've always got to consider all these things. All right so I've done these lines for myself so all I have to go and do is go and connect these dots. Those dots were my measurements that I've taken so all I go and do I'm going to say there and can you see that one is going up into where I wanted it on my shoulder. That's where I want to sit on my shoulder. Yours will differ. You are really going to work on what your body measurement, um, on your body measurements. Thing is, my shoulder length is a little bit shorter. You might have, have a wider body, a wider shoulder length. So everything is going to be slightly different if you're working for your own body. But that is fine. That's why we design at the end of the day. And now what I'm going to do with this one, I did go and I always start and I just want to see, I always have one of these corners just to start designing under the arm. I don't want a point going upwards. So I start designing there. And now all I'm going to do, this is our designing stylus from Schurfer Designs. It's actually got all my curves, my hip curves, my crotch curves, my neckline curves. So I can literally go and do any design I want. And I'm going to play with it. And I want to show you, I'm going to shift it around because I want to connect to that dot. And I want to see, again, you are playing. I can really go do something like that. And I'm scooping out more on that area. I didn't want to go scoop out. So I can shift it around till this corner actually matches nicely. And I'm going to shift around and I'm just sliding it a little bit. There's just so many curves that I can draw with my designing stylus. There we go. So that was that line that I wanted there. So now I know I'm happy with the neckline. I'm happy with where I want that to go. And I'm going to repeat it again because you are designing for your body. Um, you might really want to go lower, go lower. I just didn't want to go too low. I actually wanted it up a little bit. And the thing is going slightly higher and I fit it on my body, I can always decide to drop and just scoop it out a little bit more. If I go too low, I can't add fabric on again. So that is my lines done. Now I'm going to go and do dart manipulation. I want this dart to go into my neckline. I showed it to you on my top that I've already made. Now the first rule of dart manipulation is we create a designer's dart. So I'm going to go and draw a designer's dart. So a designer's dart is really taking your dart into the bust point. And that bust point that I have there Mark, that is for my body where I've measured down and I've measured across. That is where my bust point is sitting. And every time we do dart manipulation, that dart can move anywhere around that bust point. This is almost like a pivot point for me. But if I'm designing here, and let's say this is a C bust, a C cup dart that I have in there, meaning the size is correct for my cup size, then if I transfer it anywhere around there, I am still going to have, when it open up, opens up there, I am still going to have my C cup dot over there. Um, our commercial patterns, most of them are actually designed for a B cup and you will have to go and do a full bust adjustment. With this system, because I'm working with a just a bust template, I'm already designing for my cup size. So all I'm going to do, I'm drawing my designer's dot, meaning I need to now design with this dot, I'm going to move it somewhere else. If you see the black line, the dot that we stitch, that is my dressmaker's dot. And now I'm just going to draw the lines. And when I looked at that photo, I didn't want this 
princess line. I'm going to basically create almost like a princess line in this area. I didn't want it too close in that corner. That can be a problem when we are sewing it, so I didn't want it there. So I decided to go in just a little bit. I went in by about one centimeter. You can even go in a little bit more. I still wanted it close to that corner that when I sew it, it almost looks like it's sitting close to that corner. So I went in one centimeter and I go and draw. This is now the line where I want to move my dart to. So I am busy planning my pattern. This is now all planning it before I start doing dart manipulation. The next step is I still want to keep my waist shaping with the waist dot. Remember we're doing a princess line because if I do princess lines I can from there go straight down the middle of my waist dot and then I'm really not shaping it as much but I do want to use that shaping. Um, I can even decide to just use half of that dot for shaping. Even that will work. So whatever you are comfortable with. But I am going to go and I'm just going to make that part of my princess line. I like to go to a slight curve just here so that when I'm working with this, as I'm drawing this, it's just going into that point. Can you see there? And then I flip it over. You can go with straight line, but I like to just give myself that smoother line almost there. I think we, as we sew, we all start getting our own things that we know works with our body. And that's basically what I'm doing. And I'm going to go to a red marker, just so you can see. Because that line is going to run all the way through. As I said, and I'm going to do a stipple line. I can, if I don't want a very tight fit on my waist, I can go and just carry on with this line straight down. All the way. So I am going to be... Still sewing that line, but I am adding ease to my pattern. I want to keep the shaping, so my line will actually be running, and I'm going to just do it here on this black. I don't think it will, you can't really see it, but my line will basically keep running on there. You can see it's slightly darker, so I am removing this section. I'm actually going to remove it. So that is my planning, that's what I want it to look like. All right, so I want to do the dart manipulation, but because of the shape of my neck and because I'm going to open up on the neckline as well, I am going to quickly draw my seam allowance. Now, remember, we are designing without seam allowances. When I finish my design, I go and add my seam allowances, but I'm just going to do a normal seam allowance. I can even opt to just do a one centimeter seam allowance on this area. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw my one and a half centimeter seam allowance because that is the allowance it's actually 1.6 but we always just talk about one and a half um, because I've got these slots on my ruler which is giving me the seam allowance that I need so I just wanted to before I even cut open any lines I just want to make sure that I'm adding my seam allowances on the neckline there we go right Obviously, I will still go add seam allowances on that area, but this is just for me so that I can cut it open. And I'm just going to cut my neck away for now. There we go. So that's going to be easier for me when I do my dart manipulation now. So first off, I'm going to cut open the start and I've also got to cut open on this line where I'm going to work. So let me first cut open this line. There we go. But we don't want to cut through. We cut up to the bust position or that bust point. And then I'm going to just cut on that one. Can you see it's swiveling a little bit? I want to remove this dot. I'm going to close it. And I remember with pattern making, we want to stay balanced. We're working with a flat pattern. So if whatever I do, so wherever I do something, it will always have an effect somewhere else. So if I'm closing, I've got to open. So it's almost like a plus and a minus. If I'm minusing somewhere, I've got to go plus somewhere else to keep my pattern flat. If I can explain it to you that way. All right. So there's always... Uh, almost like a effect that it will have a reaction to what I'm doing so if I'm going to do that and I just want to grab my sellotape 
I've closed one section for my pattern to stay flat. I am going to go and I'm going to open up somewhere else. All right, so there we go. I've taken this, which is, let's say, a C cup dot or a C bus dot, and it will be exactly a C dot there. If I have to take this little bit, can you see? It looks smaller there because the distance is shorter. But look if I go put this back. Let's just turn everything in. If I can just get my fabric flat, can you see it's still the same size? Don't let that size there confuse you and say, well, whatever the size was there, it's got to be there. It's not. Look at that. It's fitting perfectly in there for me. So we've just transferred this bus dot into the neckline. Now I am doing a princess style. And one thing that I must do before I forget, and I want you to do it, is grain lines because I'm going to have three pattern pieces. So I know this one is on the fold because I'm going to work on the fold. So I just want to write for myself. This is the fold, but I am going to cut more pattern pieces here. So what I want to do, I'm going to do this one so long because this is going to be two separate pieces and then I'll divide, do a third panel. So I'm just going to do this one here and you can see I'm staying perpendicular to the hem and there's my waistline so everything is working out perfectly there's my grain line so long for this pattern when I cut it apart and what you can do as well you can go right center front uh, because the back is also going to be dropped down you don't want to confuse your pattern pieces either now another thing before I cut my pattern apart is that when we are working with this now I am not going to sew a dot. I am creating a style line. The dot shaping is still in there, even though I'm not sewing it out as a dot. Remember with dots, I can go and take that volume of the dot and I can go sew it as a dot. I can go and pleat it. I can gather it in. I can even go and remove it and let it be part of a style line. So when I'm working these seams together, then I know that dot shaping is already sitting there, but I'm not sewing it out as a dot. It is really, if I've got my top here, can you see these are just all lines that I've sewn. There we go. So all of that is really all it is. But before I carry on cutting, what is the most important thing when we sew? We've got to match everything up again. So I've got to go and add notches as well. So the first place that I could have done, and I can go close it again, I could have done it over there, but I can also just go and do a notch for myself over on that side. And that is just when I'm sewing it back together, that is where I've got to mark and make sure everything is back. And I can also decide, I've already got my waistline there, so that can really, for me, also be almost like a notch. And if I want to, I can go down even a little bit more and I just want to get my lines straight on my board. Let's just make sure I hope everything is straight there. It looks straight. And I can decide even more, put a little marker for myself on this area. So that when I'm going to be sewing, I know this is where I'm going to have to pin my pattern pieces together so that everything is going to sew back together. That is our neckline done and our princess line done. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut my princess line out. There we go. And I'm just going down onto that area. Again, remember I told you we our dot, instead of sewing it in, it becomes part of a style line, but I still want to remove that volume. So I'm going to cut this dot out. And when we did the Color blocking, what was one of the rules that I told you we've always, always got to remember when we cut our patterns apart, and that is adding seam allowances. If you don't go add seam allowances on these lines now, you're going to have a pattern that is going to be way, way too small for you. So we've got to make sure to do that. I'm not going to add seam allowance now because I'm still busy designing. And when I've cut it like this, I just take, strip, take strips of my vellum and I will go add it onto those areas with my tape, and I will go cut on the seam allowance that I need. Don't forget seam allowances. Now that is up to here where we've got our princess line. But this pattern had a little bit more to it. So I'm just going to put it on the table here. Let's just put it, sorry, I'm just going to put it there. 
Can you see? This is where my darts went into. So this is really shaping. This whole line is shaping because my bust dart is sitting there. Look if I'm lifting it. Can you see that shape over there? This line here has got nothing to do with my dart. This is really just the design line that I'm going to add in because I wanted to, set, to actually give myself an extra panel on this. And then what you can go and do, as I said, I've made marks for myself. You can go and look at that measurement and decide where do you want that line to be. I wanted this line not to be exactly equal when I'm drawing it. It's just slightly more to the front. And all I'm going to do with this now, and I'm going to draw a line here, and I wanted it to come into the armhole. So all I'm going to do, I'm taking my designing stylus, and I can decide, and I'm moving it around. I've just started with a bit of a line there for myself. So I can decide I'm going to go straight first. So I'm just going to do that first part a little bit straight. And from here I can start saying where do I want it to go to. And I might want it, I think I want it about there. So I'm going to go and I can move it till I get a nice even line going into that area. And I don't want too sharp of a curve there either. So I'm moving it up a little bit. And that is basically visually what you like when you see, um, see these lines. I'm just going to go and I want them to curve in there. So I'm just going to flip my stylus. So there I've got that line. Because we are going to go and cut it apart, I need another grain line over there. I'm just going to do another grain line. I just want to get it straight on my hemline so I don't go skew. Let's just go a little bit more. And now the important part is, again, we are cutting our pattern pieces apart. I'm going to need a notch so you can somewhere. With this one, really, I can go anywhere. I can decide... I just want a notch there and a notch there for me when I'm going to sew them together. But I think what is important is that you've got to write that write down that this is your side panel front and this is like the midsection and that you know is on the fold front. Do do that for yourself. You're going to have three pattern pieces for the back as well, and it's easy to actually go and mix them up. So I'm just going to say one front. So I'm writing it for you. It's looking upside down. But then I can just, or I can just say, I'm just going to for now say F2, and I'm going to say F3, and I know those are my front pattern pieces, so I know how I'm going to sew them together. And before I even start cutting off here as well, now I just want to go add seam allowances. I can decide to just go in a little bit more just to cap it above the, you know, above the bust area so that I'm not going to get that gaping. I really don't want this hanging open when I'm wearing my neckline. So you can go and do that as well. So I will take out just a little bit more because I know with a knit, in any way, I do have stretch on that area, but I do want to make sure that this is not going to stand away from the chest area. So that is our front pattern pieces done. Now, when we look at the back, when I showed you my top at the back, I also had a square neckline over there. Again, I measured from that little bone, that prominent bone in my neck. I measured down how far did I want it to be, or I got my husband to mark down. You can really go wherever you want to be. Mine ended up being there. And I'm going to do the same. I actually didn't show this to you now. I should have done it before I cut the pattern piece apart. I just wanted to see um, if I do have it. I'm just going to take this section. I should, I should have actually told you to do this beforehand. Because what I want to do, I'm just putting, can you see, because on both I marked the center of my shoulder line. I can see that that's where I want it to be. So I'm just going to make a little dot there because this must run uh, straight over the shoulder onto the front. I can't have this being different. And that one is over there. So I know this is going to match. All right. And I could put it back now because I already on both of them marked um, the center line. Usually you would do it before I cut it apart because you want to make sure you put it exactly on top of each other. I went from the back and the front. This must go and it be nice and smooth when I'm designing. Now again, I decided how far I wanted this to be and I wanted to make sure again my bra strap is covered. For me it's a big issue if my bra strap is sticking out there and it came to about there. So there's all my markers done again. Oh yes, and before we forget, remember on the front I lifted 
two and a half centimeters which is according to our dress kit we've got that extra dot for sleeveless styles so I needed to make that and all I'm going to do now I am going to go and draw in my neckline now we want to do princess lines on the back as well but you can see I can't really take this into the area over there on my back so I'm going to take this dot and I'm just going to shift it a little bit over onto that area so what I'm going to do I'm going to draw a little bit of a straight stipple line for myself and let's just get all these lines on top so I am going to just take I just want to get it on a line where I want to work so let's say I want it on this line I'm just going to do a little bit of a stipple line because I know that's going to be the center of my dot I know the dot is 3.8 centimeters so I can go and divide it and I can go and put it on either side now that will give me about 1.9 1 1.9 1 yeah I had to think for a second there so I can take it there and I'm going to go 1.9 over there I'm going to go and take that over there so can you see I'm just transferring this dot I just want to make sure that I'm about one centimeter. I am about one centimeter because that's what I wanted over there. All right. And I'm just going to draw it there as well. So I am transferring this dot and I'm just going to take this line further down. And here we go. Because I also want to bring it there. I'm doing a princess line. I still want to remove this dot and I'm going to remove it by putting it in the style line now you will note my dot is slightly open at the bottom and that is because I've decided to make my top short uh, shorter the dot actually runs to there because I didn't want to go to low hip when I'm designing it I really wanted to go more to just below the high hip area so I know that I've got about a centimeter just less than a centimeter there and I'm just going to go and put it in on either side there that is the only reason my dot is sitting there it's just I decided to go shorter with my top there we go and this is in any case because I'm not sewing it as a dot it's actually going to be sewn in as a seam that's going to be fine for me all right so now what I want to do and I'm going to go to my blue so that I can just show you we want to cut this apart and again you can cut all the way down if you don't want to bring in if you don't want to shape I want to keep the shape I need to bring in my waist otherwise it's going to be boxy on me so I am going to go and I'm just going to draw my lines and what I do here again as I said this is just something that I like to do I always give myself just just that slight curve just going into that area and then I pick it up in the dart legs and just that little bit in there as well and it just literally picks it up it's like a slight tip just there where I'm dividing it and this line will go all the way down let's go I think I'm not even going to draw it you can see it clearly over there and that's all I'm doing but before I go and cut everything apart as well we need to do our facing I need to put notches I need to put grain line so this is going to be my back and this I know is on the fold I know that's the fold line so I'm not going to do a grain, a grain line over there I do want to add again grain lines here so I am going to just draw one on this I'll do the other one before I cut it apart let's make sure that we are straight that is a grain line we are cutting pattern pieces apart I need notches on the back we always do our two notches let's just say I'm going to do a notch there I always like to use my waist almost as a notch because I always draw in my waistline but otherwise you can go anywhere else so let's say there's a notch over there I'm just going to do that and if I wanted to I can even go down and do that but on the back for me that is more than enough now I should have done it on the front you've got to draw a little bit of a facing I cannot just take a strip and try and sew it on I'm not going to get this nice neat finish in this corner that I would get with a facing so all I'm going to do I'm going to go and just draw the neckline I want to put this over there just so I don't move the paper so I'm going to go and I'm just drawing my facing I 
it's, it's moved a little bit in any case so I'll have to just redraw that line okay let's see how wide do we want this facing to be I'm just going to do mine because I know I'm going to trim it away I don't want the excess there usually it's about five centimeters but I just want a nice strip so that I can go sew it on and I know that is going to work for for what I want so I'm going to go ahead and I can just go draw this line and obviously I'm going to draw on the shoulder there as well and again I can decide I'm just going to do three for now as well um, I'm going to go draw on the shoulder and then I'm just going to go and do, let's just see, so the weights are in the way over here. Right, mine is really small guys, the, the, um, you really want to be a, a facing if you're going to keep it in go to about a five centimeter i'm going to sew mine and i'm going to trim it away in any case that's how i finished mine but when we've drawn our facing i want you to write again because we know this is on the fold and you're going to write fold i'm just going to put an s here that reminds me that's my shoulder and i'm going to put that it's on the back and now you will want to go add seam allowances around your facing so i will go add seam allowances on the shoulder I'll add seam allowance on that area. I'm not going to add seam allowance here because I am going to trim it away. So if you look at the finish of mine, and I'm just going to take this away here. Look at the finish of my mine. I went and I trimmed the inside away. So it almost looks like a tape almost that I've got in that area. That's what I want to create with mine. So go and draw a facing for the front and the back. Now I can go ahead and I can go and cut it out. Again, I'm not going to do and repeat it now. Go add seam allowances on this area. Go add on your, you can really go and add all the way around. We'll do those ones after I've cut it apart. So I'm going to go and cut. Please remember I'm cutting this off now because this is really just for it exercise that I'm doing this you need seam allowances there but I've shown you how to draw off the seam allowance so I'm not going to repeat that again I'm cutting on these lines the last step now is to actually design that extra style line that I wanted and again this is just a line I'm drawing in that I'm going to sew so I can top stitch it that is all this is it's not got not nothing to do with really dots or anything like that I've got my line straight because I want to go straight for the first part of this line. So I'm just going to go and draw this line in a red for you. So let's go draw it. I'm going to draw it to about, let's say to about there. Alright. And from there I want to start curving it. And I'm just going to give it a slight curve into this area. I can really go and just pick it up and I'm almost curving it into there. This, there's no rule where this has got to be. You can really go and work on your body and see where it works for you. And then the last step is because this is a cut line where I'm going to cut my pattern pieces apart. I want you to go ahead and do your notches. I want you to go and add a grain line. You're going to write then like we did on the front. You're going to say pattern piece one for the back two and three for the back. So that is what you can go and do. And that is really all there is to designing this top. This princess line over there, that is where our dots are sitting. I still have the dot volume there. I've removed the dot volume from the side. It's gone in there and you saw the pattern piece went like that. Now when I'm sewing it as a seam, that style line actually moves back again and that is really taking out that width of the dot bus dot that I had. I think that's the easiest way to explain that you've got to see that, that my dots are still there. I didn't remove it. I transferred my dot. I did dot manipulation. So for me it's really important when we start designing with dots that you understand. I'm moving it. It's still there somewhere. Where did I move it to? All right and then this extra line and can you see it's going on the side of the bust. It's really got nothing to do with my dots. It's got nothing to do with the shaping. My shaping is sitting in this area where it brings my fabric together to give me this nice cup over the bust area. This is purely going on the side of my body and this is my style line. Nothing to do with my dots. 
I decided I wanted to put it in. I can really go anywhere and put lines I want as long as I remember to put seam allowances on them and sew them back together again. So that is just something that I wanted to just touch on again when we are working on the front end with dots so that you know even though you're not seeing the dot it's not sewn out as a dot it's still sitting there in the dot manipulation that I've done. So please go ahead and do this exercise and go and take your dress kit, your blueprint and go and design this. And again, I'm saying if you're not a sure for Designs customer yet and you want to do these exercises, just take a basic pattern that you have, but make sure we still want dots in that pattern. I need the dot for the shaping and to do that dot manipulation, but then go ahead and do exactly the same exercise that I've done. Um, I think the only thing that I do want to mention is just be wary because I know with my sloper it's sitting there. If you're using a board pattern for a basic pattern and it's dropped a little bit, remember you can't measure from there to there and then go to your pattern that's sitting there and measure that same amount. You are going to drop it too much. You are going to have a problem. So just be a bit cautious when you are working with a board pattern when you're doing this. But for all my other ladies that's out there that's got the dress kit, Go do this exercise for me and then next week I'm going to actually just do a quick video on how I sew it and how I finish this neck. I think it's going to be more about the neck finishing the neckline than anything else maybe just a couple more overlocker tips and techniques for you for next Tuesday. So that is basically it for today so please go ahead do this exercise and once you've done it cut out some fabric so that you're ready to sew with me for next Tuesday. Enjoy the rest of the week. Happy sewing.